This is my Beetleweight Small. First built in 2019 and undergoing a number of revisions since then, it's been to many local events with good success, taking a number of event wins. With a design inspired by my favourite team on BattleBots, it's known for hitting hard and being difficult to counter. Now this is my new featherweight Smallish that I recently built and competed with at the Australian Rover Wars Nationals. Taking many of the lessons that I learnt from the smaller weight class, I took the step of scaling design up to see how it would perform when it's 10 times the weight. Today, I want to give you a breakdown of the design and build as well as how it performed at Robo Wars. First up, despite its name, this bot is big. With wheels standing 38cm tall and coming in at 80cm across, it is significantly bigger than all the other bots in the competition. The 34cm weapon bar is made from 16mm Biz Alloy 450. Powering the weapon is two 50-65 brushless motors using 8mm V-belts and pulleys made from 60-61 aluminum with tapered roller bearings. The weapon axle is 20mm titanium. Since the whole frame hangs off the weapon axle to ensure that it is mounted solidly, it runs through both the outer and inner frame rail as well as 60mm of HTPE blocks to provide plenty of rigidity. To secure the axle in place, it uses 6mm roll pins that we can easily remove to separate the frame for maintenance between fights. The frame is made from milled 12mm 6060 aluminum and 10mm HDPE top and bottom plates, all bolted together with M5 bolts. The stabilizing legs are also made from 10mm HDPE. The drive is powered by 775 brushed motors with a 1 to 18 reduction planetary gearbox into a further 1 to 3 reduction via timing belt to the 15mm thick HDPE wheels that run on a 14mm titanium axle with HDPE bushings. For the electrical system, it uses 1400 mAh 6S LiPos with bot bits 30 amp brushed speed controllers for the drive and red brick 200 amp brushless speed controllers for the weapon. Each half of the bot is independent to the other, each with their own battery, switch, receiver, and all other electronics. The weight on this bot is right at the 13.6 kilo limit, and we were spending the night before the event deciding which bolts were not critical and could be removed to save the last few grams in order to make weight. One last thing I made up before the event was a custom stand to put the robot on in the pits for safety reasons. This was also useful for working on the bot by giving us a solar platform to make repairs on. At the event, we measured the tip speed to be at about 51 meters per second, spinning at around about 2,800 RPM at top speed, and had no further issues passing safety. First fight for the event was going up against Direct Damage, a vertical spinner with a big weapon that would easily be able to hit my frame, so something to watch out for. I was able to get a good early hit by damaging the right wheel, followed shortly by hitting the other wheel. This left them not able to move particularly well, and I was able to get in some good hits to secure the win without taking any real damage from my first fight of the event. Next up was Scarifier, a lifter bot that I have fought twice before last year at the Sportsman event with my lifter bot Giga Blue. This fight however was over quickly, as after a couple of decent hits, the 3D printed pulleys that Scarifier uses in his drive sheared, leaving them unable to move. This was the last fight for day one of the event for me, and we took the time overnight to look over the bot and see what needed to be done to get it ready for day two. After watching back some footage from the first two fights, I wanted to improve the grip on the wheels to stop them spinning so much. The fix for this was super simple. We just hammered some nails into the wheels, cut the heads off, leaving some cleats that made a massive difference when we tested it the next morning back at the arena. Up next was the last qualifying fights for the tournament, and this time I was going up against Raptor, a very well armoured four-wheel drive spinner. This fight was really fun. I generally just have a go weapon on weapon strategy in my fights, and this fight was absolutely no exception, with my aim being just to keep on top of Raptor and not giving them space to think. Thirty seconds into the fight, I lost one of the weapon pulleys, but I have two motors for a reason, and was able to keep going, still dishing out the hits. This was until, unfortunately, about fifty seconds into the fight though, when the other pulley also came off, leaving me with no weapon. After a bit of driving around, with myself taking a number of hits from Raptor, I decided it was best to tap out, take the loss, 
rather than take damage for a further two minutes. After the fight, I was able to inspect the damage to the bot, finding out that the first pulley that had come off was in fact due to the motor shaft shearing off. The other pulley just seems to have come loose. I also had a number of gouges to the HDPE bottom plates and to the wheels, but they were still usable. We installed a new motor and were ready to go for the next fight. Despite the loss, our opponent didn't come out untouched either. I hit that belt guard so hard it actually hit through into the pulley and belt behind it, almost cutting through the belt, which would have disabled their weapon. I also did a lot of damage to their frame, bending the weapon supports and drive. With two wins and one loss now, we seeded into the Redemption Tournament, and up first in the quarterfinals we're up against Ares, a two-wheel drive vertical spinner. With thin top plates on my opponent, I decided to start the fight spinning down for the first time to try and break through into the electronics. The start of this fight was a bit messy. It turns out that when the bar is spinning downwards, the gyro forces on the bot is a lot stronger for some reason, causing it to be much harder to control. Control issues aside, my strategy did work out however, quickly breaking the top plate on Ares and then taking out the speed controller. Other than one of my stabilizing legs need to be replaced after this fight, we didn't really take any major damage. Up next in the semi-final was Smell the Cheese, a very, very scary four-wheel drive vertical spinner that has been dealing out some very crazy hits so far in the event. They however can't drive upside down, and normally rely on a self-rider if they get flipped. They did take the self-rider off this fight, as they suspected it would just get destroyed before they got a chance to use it anyway. I started off spinning down again, and after a couple of exchanges, they were knocked onto their back and counted out. I did take a couple of good hits from this short fight, with a good shot to my pulley, just missing a belt, but otherwise was still in good condition. Now in the finals of the Redemption Tournament, my last opponent would be Zapper, a drum spinner. Once again, I spun down to start the fight off, and went weapon on weapon to see whose would break first. This time, however, it was my opponent's weapon that broke first, with Zapper's belt failing about 30 seconds into the fight, and after a few more hits, I was able to take out the wheels, disabling them and taking the win. Rather amusingly, just after the countdown finished and I was declared the winner, my left wheel fell off. Well, they made for a great way to finish the event at least. Three, two, one, and the winner small. Congratulations to our small and winner of our runner-up tournament. I finished the event with 5 wins and 1 loss, taking out 1st place in the Redemption Tournament. With an average fight length of just 55 seconds, I was able to secure some very quick KOs and was very happy with the overall performance of the bot. Going over the bot post-event, the wheels are chewed up, as expected, but still have plenty of fights left in them. The frame itself, mostly untouched, other than needing some new top and bottom HDP plates. Both of the weapon motors in the frame for the last fight will need replacing, as one is not spinning freely and the other has cracked dismounting points. The weapon bar has a blunted tip, as expected, but overall held up great and has no bends in it. The wheel axle that fell out at the end of the final fight seems to just be due to a poorly tightened bolt. For future versions of the bot, I would like to move to an asymmetric bar to help with bite on weapon engagements, and possibly look into different weapon motors. Next up, however, for this bot is to pop on a saw blade for the upcoming sportsman event in March for the World Science Festival, Brisbane. Big thanks to the team that ran the event and all my fellow competitors for making it a fantastic weekend. If you want to see all the fights from the event, link is in the description. 
or if you want to see the slow motion highlights, you can check it out here.